Based on Elon Musk's increase in net worth in 2021, here's a running counter for how that breaks down in real time while you watch this video. On the first business day of every year, like clockwork, you'll see news articles talking about how the average CEO has earned as much as the average person will make all year by 11 a.m. or something. Let's dive a bit deeper into that gap. Hey everyone, my name is Preet, and this channel is for anyone who wants to learn more about personal finance, investing, and the world of money around us. According to the Economic Policy Institute, American CEOs were paid 351 times as much as a typical worker in 2020 on average. For the top 350 US firms they looked at, the average compensation for these CEOs was $24.2 million. Now, that's a big gap. Based on a 37.5 hour work week, the average full-time employee would work 1,801 hours in a year. According to the United States Census Bureau, the real median income for a household was $67,521 in 2020. That means that on the first working day of the year, the average CEO from the top 350 firms would have earned the median household's annual income by roughly 2.01 in the afternoon, assuming an unpaid lunch break at noon for an hour. As for Elon Musk, if we took his increase in net worth in 2021, which was mostly due to the increase in value of his stock holdings, not the salary he earns, and wanted to know how soon into the new year he would need to increase his net worth as much as the median household earns all year, it would take 17 seconds. I'll leave a link in the description to this calculator, but note that it looks like they are off by a factor of 10. But it's still fun, and you can plug in your own income and get depressed. Now, this gap has grown quite a bit over time. Again, citing the Economic Policy Institute's data, they say that going back to 1978, CEO pay by 2020 has increased by 1,322% since then. Compare that to the growth in the S&P 500 over the same time of 817%. Now, that figure is adjusted for inflation and uses the price-only return. It's not the total return, which means including dividends and the reinvestment of those dividends. But then compare these numbers to that of the typical worker, who's only seen a cumulative 18% growth in earnings. Ouch. Now, if we look at the AFL-CIO's Executive Pay Watch report, we can go a bit deeper. While the average CEO pay for the top 350 firms might have been $24.2 million, we know that some earn less than that, and some earn way higher than that. If we look at the highest paid CEO for an S&P 500 listed company in 2020, we see Paycom CEO Chad Richeson topping the sheets with a CEO pay of $211,131,206. If we look at companies in the Russell 3000 index, a less well-known stock market index for the U.S., but instead of 500 companies, it looks at 3,000 U.S. listed companies, we see a company called Playtiga Holding Corporation paid its CEO, Robert Antical, $372,008,176. So he'll have earned the median U.S. household income for the year by 9.20 a.m. on the first workday of the year for a typical worker. And in case you are wondering where Elon Musk shows up on this list, he doesn't. Because he only has a salary of $23,760. Remember, his increase in net worth of about $120 billion in 2021 was pretty much all due to the increase in the value of his already held shares of stock in his company's most notably Tesla. That being said, if we go back to 2018, the New York Times lists his compensation package that year from Tesla at about $2.3 billion. And while we often see statistics for the overall gender wage gap, the Pew Research Center says that in 2020, women earned 84% of what men did on average, the CEO gender wage gap is a thing too. In a list of the 200 highest paid CEOs at public companies from the New York Times, only 6.5% of those names were women. Yikes. The Paywatch report also provides info on the ratio of CEO pay to the average pay of workers at those companies, while the average pay ratio of a CEO versus average workers overall was 299 to 1 for S&P 500 companies, we can see that for some companies, this ratio can be in the thousands. 
Now, you have to account for some companies having lots of part-time workers. So if we look at companies where the median worker pay is closer to the full-time median pay, well, still we see some very high ratios in the thousands to one range. And if we sort this list by median worker pay, we see that some companies like Google and Facebook and Netflix indeed pay quite high salaries. The next question we might want to ask is, why are CEOs paid so much? According to Lawrence Michel, a distinguished fellow at the Economic Policy Institute, one possible reason is known as what he calls the Lake Wobegon effect. Lake Wobegon is a fake town where essentially everyone believes that they are above average. And of course, that can't be the case. Now, in terms of explaining CEO pay increase over time when companies are trying to attract a leader for their company, they obviously want the best and are willing to pay to lure top talent to the company. Part of that lure is paying above average compensation for a CEO. And as every new CEO hire is paid above average, the average itself increases. And so the next company looking for a CEO will want to pay higher than average based on a higher average. And it just never stops. And one way to increase potential compensation packages is to grant stock and stock options. This part of overall CEO compensation is about 85%. And many will argue that this is okay since their compensation is now tied to the performance of the company. However, there is a lot of research that suggests this actually promotes short-termism in management decisions by these CEOs. They have an incentive to make short-term actions that make the company look more attractive to the stock market and then cash out their shares. This could lead to making big investment cuts at a company to improve cash flow at the expense of not setting the company up well for the very long term, just as one example. Other evidence suggests that the highest paid CEOs are not worth it at least from a stock performance perspective. On the contrary, share prices of companies who pay their CEOs less than their sector medians outperform the companies that paid more than the sector median, and that outperformance was almost 40%. It's certainly not a black and white issue. Noted economist Tyler Cowen at George Mason University offers some thoughtful ideas that suggest attacking outsized CEO compensation in general might be unwarranted. While outliers exist that are certainly questionable, he suggests that the market for CEOs might merely reflect the wider skill set required for modern CEOs, and the fact that there's a limited talent pool and high demand for people who can run multinational companies adeptly. I'll provide a link to an excerpt from his book that was published in Time Magazine in the description below. Now, so far, we've only been focusing on the change in CEO pay when looking at the change in the ratio of CEO pay to worker pay and how that went from 31 to 1 in 1978 to 351 to 1 in 2020. Another question to ask is, what is holding down the average worker's compensation? In an interview with CNBC, Lawrence Michel offers six possible factors. High rates of unemployment, which lead people into accepting lower wage jobs. Globalization, it's cheaper to set up factories and employ labor in countries with lower safety regulations and worker protections. The erosion of unions, which makes it harder for workers to negotiate. Low minimum wages an increase in non-compete clauses, which reduces the ability to job hop to get a better wage increase, and what he called domestic outsourcing, which means relying more on contractors and freelancers. Leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Do CEOs get paid too much? And if so, what would be your suggestion on a better way to figure out CEO pay? If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to my channel to learn more about money and managing your finances. Of course, hit the bell to turn on notifications for when I publish new content. And I will see you in the next video.